we heard that some of the people in the industry were referring to the research set aside as the research steal aside. In the Northeast United States, summer flounder, or fluke, is among the most popular local fish. Though it's properly managed today, the fluke population is still rebuilding from past overfishing, which means the catch limits are lower than most fishermen would like. But fishery scientists and managers need data to monitor the fluke population and for setting future catch limits. In comes the Research Set-Aside Program, a program that sets aside additional allotments of summer flounder that fishermen could purchase, and the proceeds were used to fund research. So fishermen could catch more fish, giving scientists more data, a win-win for both. At least that was the intention. Certain members of the industry that had purchased lots were under-reporting or, or misreporting the amount of summer flounder that they were harvesting so that they could land more fish than what they actually paid for. This whole operation worked because fishermen and the dealers conspired to misrepresent fish that are entering the supply chain. So that when the NOAA quality control aspect of the research set-aside program happened, everything looked legitimate. Everything matched 100%. What investigators would soon learn was that some of the fishermen who had bought extra quota through this program were using it to prevent getting fined when they landed more fish than their original quota allowed. Of course, fines only come when enforcement agents are on site. So when they weren't around, these fishermen would not report or mislabel the extra catch. We discovered right around 2010 that these fishermen weren't accurately reporting the amount of fish that they were catching. We discovered that during two inspections on vessels fishing out of New York. And once we kind of got an idea what the scheme was, we started surveillance. So we started long-term covert surveillance of these vessels each time that they offloaded. As we did more surveillance, we uncovered more evidence of misrepresentations and false fishing vessel trip reports. And we were able to develop enough probable cause to serve search warrants. In March of 2012, we did seven simultaneous search warrants on vessels, residents, and businesses. Those search warrants revealed significant amount of sales invoices, purchase orders, payments, business type journals. We took that data and reconciled it against the data that was reported to NOAA Fisheries, and we realized that the data submitted to NOAA was significantly less than what these fishermen clearly had been catching and selling. Over the course of four years, with dozens of agents putting in tens of thousands of man hours to investigate this case, an elaborate scheme unraveled involving an extensive network of fishermen and dealers. In the end, more than 20 felonies were charged and over $3 million in fines collected. More than half a million pounds of fluke was unreported or mislabeled, which meant a huge increase in supply. This drove the price of fluke down, which had profound effects on the local fishing economy. The RSA case was very important to the fishermen that were operating under the law and by the regulations. Approximately one month after we executed the warrants for this case, the price for summer flounder went up approximately $1 a pound, or almost 60%, uh, which allowed the legal fishermen to get more for their catch and took a lot of black market fish off the market. Prices rebounded, but other issues rippled across the industry, leaving longer lasting effects. Tens of thousands of pounds of scup and black sea bass were unreported or mislabeled, and some fluke was reported as squid. Mislabeled product led to skewed data for all of these fisheries, which meant fisheries managers didn't have accurate data to set appropriate catch limits in subsequent years, all because of a few bad actors. At the end of the day, our investigations really aren't about trying to get people in trouble or get the biggest fine or, you know, put people in jail. It's about gaining compliance and what this case did was sent a message to those who are going to circumvent the law or the regulations that we're going to be out there and we're going to investigate it and we're going to make sure that all fishermen have a level playing field. <laughs>